What's up guys? Welcome back to El Merengue Cule. Today is our final preseason match versus Chelsea in, I believe, Charlotte, uh, United States, obviously. And um, this is a very, very important game because it's the final, the final preparation match before our first official match of the season, which is not just any game, but the Supercopa final. So we're definitely going to want to see the team start to engine up a little bit. AC Milan was not so great. They started to look a little bit better against Barcelona, but still not fully impressed with uh, everything I've been seeing. Today's the day where I want to come back, especially after halftime, but especially at the end of the game, um, feeling a little more confident with how the team is performing. Uh, Ancelotti's lineup out there includes Vinicius, Brahim Diaz up top, and Rodrigo on the right wing. Rodrigo, who missed out on the Clásico due to uh, like muscle fatigue, they said, which I thought was interesting since... He really hasn't played any single games or really done much training at all in preseason, but okay, so be it. So I'm interested to see how he's looking out there. Vinicius came in on fire, in my opinion, against Barcelona. He was the guy that I felt like once he came in, he really changed the game, really changed our attack and made us look a little bit better. So curious to see how he does. Brahim Diaz has been probably the guy that in the first two games, this whole preseason, I've been, I don't want to say trashing on, but just saying that he's not really appearing. So Today, I need to see a much better performance from Brahim Diaz to really feel confident with him, uh, you know, leading into this season. As far as uh, the rest of the team, it's looking a lot more like what we're probably going to see in that first official game against Atalanta, um, especially the defense with Lucas Vazquez, Rudiger Militao, and then Fran Garcia along with Cortuan Gol. Fran Garcia, I'm curious to see if he'll be the one to actually play. I feel like he, if, if I was the coach, I would actually have him make, I would have him be the starter. Mendy came from, a, is, is not really going to play any preseason matches and he's going to come from a long uh, vacation. So, Fran Garcia might actually be more informed. So, I want our defense looking sharp, especially when we're coming up against players like Ngunku. And then, uh, ex-Barcelona player, Mike Mark Gu, 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 I don't even know how to say his name. We'll see how he does. But, um, yeah, it's going to be one, one interesting game. So, make sure you um, hit the like button subscribe we got a lot of content coming up for the season and if you haven't watched me and ricky's live reactions to the el clasico from a couple days ago make sure you go check that out and on top of that there is a video of me touring all of stanford bridge while i was in london for the champions league final so if you haven't seen that video i suggest you also do that at the end of this one without further ado I'll, let's get started and i'll see you at the end of the first half Okay, guys, we are back from that first half. A really good half, in my opinion, in terms of uh, for any fan that's watching this sport. Um, uh, the score right now is 2-1 for Real Madrid. Goals from uh, Lucas Vasquez. They ended up giving it to Lucas Vasquez. Could have been maybe a known goal, in my opinion. And then the second one for Brahim Diaz. Madueke ended up scoring for Chelsea after, once again, the first half. So let's kind of break it down a little bit more. Um, not the best of starts for Real Madrid. I felt like the first 15 minutes, they were looking a little bit asleep out there. Chelsea was doing a lot more knocking around with the ball, trying to play a little bit like Manchester City type thing. Um, but all in all, Chelsea still looks like a team that can't really play that way. Uh, I was seeing a lot of mistakes from Chelsea all in all. However, um, one of the weakest things that I noticed, noticed from Real Madrid, especially in those first 15 minutes, is the, the aerial balls. Any sort of cross in the air... They really struggle. Minute three, right off the get-go, um, I believe, I, I think in Gunku, someone put in a cross, and Sterling is wide open. Thankfully, Sterling, I, I have no idea what he did with that header, um, but uh, yeah, he was wide open, should have been a goal for Chelsea, um, and luckily it wasn't. Um, and this is not the first time, and that was not the last time that we were going to see that. We'll talk a little more about Chelsea's goal. However, after those first 15 minutes, Real Madrid finally woke up, and, I mean, their offensive firepower really started taking over with the main highlight going to Vinicius. I mean, for, from coming, from just coming back from uh, vacations, having maybe like, what, two, three practices, he is looking completely like in form, on fire. Um, he gets the ball and just terrorizes the defense. They literally do not know how to defend him. It's like he's earned the respect from a lot of the defenders all around the world. Um, compared to previous se compared to previous seasons now, um, so yeah, just running circles, making really good penetrating runs. Um, he likes to do this thing where he checks on he checks to the ball and then he does his curved run 
into space, similar to when he scored that goal against Bayern Munich in the Champions League from uh, Tony Cruz's pass. He did something similar today. <clears throat> and uh, he actually ended up getting the assist for the second goal um, to Brahim Diaz, which was a beautiful pass to Rivella, which now let's talk about Brahim Diaz. I was asking to see a little bit more from him and he delivered. Um, he's been a little more active. He got that goal, really, really nice touch, running around uh, the goalie and, uh, and just gently passing it into the, into the goal. And then I think the weakest of the three was definitely Rodrigo, who once again, he has also not gotten much training, didn't play last game. So these are her first, his first minutes of preseason and you can definitely tell. Hopefully he starts to, to get a little more in shape and, uh, and improve. And to finish off this first half analysis, I just wanted to jump into the Chelsea goal, which continues with uh, what I was describing that I saw in the first 15 minutes and all, and all in all in this preseason from Real Madrid, which is just poor, poor, poor defending from, uh, from set pieces, from crosses. Um, this time it was um, Madueke who ended up getting the goal. And I mean, if you go back and look at this, the highlights, what, what in the world was uh, Fran Garcia doing? You could make the argument that maybe Courtois should have come out and gotten that ball, but Fran Garcia does not even try to contest it, does not even try to um, get Madueke, you know, a little bit of a, of a struggle, a little challenge. He just kind of puts his head down, leans over, and lets Madueke completely jump free and, uh, and get that nice goal for Chelsea. Um, I think Real Madrid was, all in all, the much, much, much better team this first half, Chelsea's still making, like I said, a lot of mistakes defensively too. Um, so it's been a fun half to watch and definitely something that I wanted to see um, what I was asking, just to see a better Real Madrid compared to the first two games. I think we definitely got that. However, um, Chelsea, in my opinion, has been the weakest of the three opponents that, that uh, they've seen in this preseason. Let's see how the second half is. You know, with these pre uh, preseason games, there's a lot of changes in personnel. So I really wanted to spend a little more time talking about the first half. Um, before we talk about the, the final whistle. Um, without further ado, um, stick around. I'll be right back for that second half analysis and uh, end of the video. See you guys then. Okay, guys, I'm back after the uh, second half. And honestly, for all that matters, we could have ended the video after the first half because the second half was probably one of the most boring halves I've ever watched. Absolutely nothing happened aside from literally the first minute in which uh, Ancelotti subbed out Courtois for Lunin and uh, Lunin ended up making a save for, from like a one-on-one, -on -one essentially. May have been in Kunku, I'm not even sure. But a really, really, really good save from Lunin. And like I said, aside from that, not another thing happened in this match. Um, minute 65, Ancelotti subbed out the three Brazilians, Vini, Rodrigo, Militao, which I thought was a really good decision. Um, the team is essentially ready to go for the Supercopa, the uh, UEFA Super Cup versus Atalanta. Um, I think the big takeout from this game, even though not the greatest of games still from Madrid, it showed that when they had their best team out there, and they don't even have their full team, obviously, but when they had their best team out there and they and they cared and they put in um, energy, they were the best. I mean, they, they were just way better than Chelsea. So the team shows that when they want to, they can turn it up and they can do what they want. They can create the attacks they want and, um, and, just, and just score goals. But... Um, what we saw at the end, at the, towards the end of the first half, nearly like around minute 30 was a team that after they scored the second goal, they really took the foot off the pedal and, uh, and stopped trying to get more goals, uh, which is why Chelsea scored and which is why in the second half, not much happened. Um, I do, I was a little bit sad that Endrik and Arda Guller didn't get to play. I think this would have been a great game to see both of them, but especially a good game for, for uh, um, Endrik to maybe have gotten a little more confidence, uh, maybe get a couple shots on target, maybe get a goal. Um, so I was a little bit upset to, to not have seen him. Um, I do also want to give a special mention to Mario Martin. This is Real Madrid Castilla's captain, and he just went and played all three games in preseason, all 90 minutes per game. He played every single minute there was to play um, in this preseason uh, tour, and he did a great job. I mean, honestly, I saw very few mistakes from him. I saw solid performances, nothing out of this world, but at the same time, he played as a center defensive mid. I mean, he's not going to go out there and, and, you know, dribble around people, make people take shots. He did have a shot this game towards the end, which honestly could have gone in. Um, 
So just a big shout out for that guy. Has a big future. I mean, with Tony Cruz leaving, opens up a slot in uh, for another center mid in the team. Maybe he can get a few more appearances this season in La Liga. And I think he's a player that potentially we can we can uh, watch out for and, and uh, hope he has a good career. Maybe with Madrid, maybe not. Um, another one being Nico Paz, which he's a phenomenal player. Unfortunately, with, with how stacked Madrid's offense is, I just don't know if uh, if his future is in Madrid, but that remains to be seen. And uh, I just want to finish off the, the, the round of shout outs with Modric, which at 39 years old looked like one of the most fit, uh, best players out there on the field. I mean, you had likes of like Nkunku, uh, Madueque, Enzo Fernandez. Um, all these players from Chelsea who are younger than him, just looking absolutely gassed out there on the field. And Modric, 39 years old, running back, winning balls, defending. And I mean, the the stadium was chanting his name at one point. And by the time that he got subbed out, standing ovation, everyone chanting his name. I mean, it was, it was truly something to be seen. And I think all Madrisa should be... Um, excited, but also just grateful that it's, you know, that he's still playing with us. It is going to be his last year in Madrid and we need to enjoy Modric as much as we can. Um, on, let's just go ahead and, um, and end it on that note. Um, the preseason was overall a success in terms of no injuries. The players look like they're, they're warmed up and, and ready to go now. And so with that being said, I want to leave you guys with a question. I want you to let me know down in the comment box who you thought the best player was. Uh, for Madrid in this whole preseason tour. Um, I know who I think it is. I'm not going to let, let you guys know. But if uh, for whatever um, correct answer I see, not correct, but whoever I agree with in the comment box, I will heart your comment and uh, and leave a response. So go ahead and go down to the comment box and uh, and let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching this in, this entire video, for making it all the way to the end. Um, if you did, please make sure you hit that like button. Uh, I'm really grateful you guys. Obviously, it's been it's been hard um, kind of starting back up with videos, but we're going to need your support more than ever to kind of keep this going. The Real Madrid and Barca video had a lot more a lot more views, a lot better responses, comments, uh, likes. So I really, really appreciate that. I just want to show my appreciation for you guys. Um, with that being said, uh, make sure you go check out that Stanford Bridge tour video. I think it's a really neat one if you haven't seen it. And um, yeah. Leave that like button. There's going to be a video coming up uh, for possibly a pregame to the Super Cup game against Atalanta with that special little thing that I've been telling you guys that I'm going to have for this season. So lots to look forward to. Hit that subscribe button. And without further ado, as always, a la Madrid.